The Life and Work of Mary Whitten Calkins, A Brief History of the American Psychological Association's First Female President. Mary Whitten Calkins was born on March 30th, 1863, in Hartford, Connecticut. Her father was a Presbyterian minister, and she was the oldest of five children. She spent most of her childhood in Buffalo, New York. She never married and never had children, dedicating her life to her career. The Life and Work of Mary Whitten Calkins, A Brief History of the American Psychological Association's First Female President. Mary Whitten Calkins was born on March 30th in 1863 in Hartford, Connecticut. Her father was a Presbyterian minister, and she was the oldest of five children. She spent most of her childhood in Buffalo, New York. She was never married and never had children, dedicating her life to her career. Mary Whitten Calkins began college at Smith College in 1882. Following graduation, she traveled Europe with her family for a year before starting work as a Greek tutor at Wellesley College. She was offered a position to teach psychology at Wellesley shortly after working there. And to do this, she was allowed to pursue graduate studies in psychology at Clark University and Harvard University. She was denied full admission at Harvard, however, due to her gender. She continued to study at Harvard after she began teaching psychology at Wellesley in 1891. Her professors urged the university to accept Calkins as a student, but the university refused. She eventually completed her studies in 1895, having done the work to receive a doctorate degree. Professors petitioned for Calkins to receive that doctorate, but the university continued to refuse. While at Harvard, Calkins studied under Dr. William James. She wrote about association while studying under Dr. James at Harvard. This became her first published work in the summer of 1892. Calkins also studied in the lab of Dr. Hugo Munstenberg at Harvard. In her autobiography, Calkins recalled the warm welcome she received upon her arrival. Dr. Munsterberg praised Calkins as the strongest student he had had in his time since his arrival at Harvard. Early in her career, Calkins began with studying memory, specifically short-term memory. Her work on association and her work with Dr. Hugo Munstenberg played a key role in her studying of memory. Throughout her work, she developed a method known as the paired associate method, in which participants were presented a number of paired associated items in a listed format. The type of presentation varied from study to study, and this method was used in various studies, including studies on primacy, recency, frequency, and vividness. She also studied on learning effects, which she considered the negative result of habit. Her studies relating to this involved interference more so than any of the other studies she had conducted on memory. Calkins found significant results relating to recency. She also experimented with negative recency effects and found modality effects, finding that recency played a more significant role in recalling auditory stimuli. She also explored primacy effects and recognized the importance of primacy in recall. Hawkins considered two different forms of psychology, one being the psychic contents, that was the elements of the mind, and the other being self-psychology. Hawkins described the self in parts, including the self that does not change, the self that can be changed, the self that is a combination of memories, feelings, perceptions, and thoughts, the self that is unique, and the self that is related to the outside social community. She believed that the self could be observed in various ways. Due to the description of the self, Calkins created self-psychology in the introspective school of psychology. Calkins centered her career in academics around promoting her theory of self-psychology, and her system remained largely the same throughout her career. She first published Relating to Self-Psychology in 1900, and her first book relating to the subject came out the following year, called An Introduction to Psychology. Calkins saw personalistic psychology in two ways, including elements that were purely psychological, as well as elements that were exclusively biological. Calkins believed that ideas regarding the self belonged to the psychological element of psychology. Each aspect of the self were considered by Calkins to be distinguished from themselves, including identity, totality, change, uniqueness, and relatedness. Calkins believed her opinion regarding the self to be true due to her work as well as her personal introspection. Throughout her career, Calkins achieved a great many things. She established one of the first 11 psychological laboratories in the United States 
She became the first female president of the American Psychological Association in 1905. She became a member of Phi Beta Kappa. She received an honorary doctor of letters from Columbia University. She received a doctor of laws from Smith College. She was elected president of the Philosophical Society at the University of California in 1918, two years following a guest lecture. And finally, she became the first female honorary member of the British Psychological Association in 1928. Hawkins played a critical role in women's roles in psychology. She was a supporter of social justice for women and faced many challenges in her field due to her gender. Hawkins also shared a great deal in common with the women she worked with at Wellesley College. The relationship she shared with these other female faculty influenced her interest in self-psychology, as well as the mentors she had at her time in Harvard. She is quoted to have said, the student trained to reach decisions in the light of logic and of history will be disposed to recognize that a distinction based on difference of sex is artificial and illogical. Hawkins found self-psychology necessary for the foundation of psychology in academics. She believed the conscious self was an integral focus in psychology, and in the early 1900s, maintained a large focus on responding to the critics of this. She challenged the behaviorist mindset, focusing on the internal self. Hawkins connected her interest in religion and ethics into self-psychology. She received criticism regarding her steadfastness in self-psychology, however, as many felt self-psychology was too closely related to the soul and also that self-psychology did not match the modern scientific ideals. Hawkins worked to defend this theory, however, though scientific objectivity was a great challenge. She worked to remove lingering ideas of the soul and develop a case for self-psychology. Though despite these attempts, self-psychology did not last in the changing field. This led to the infrequent use of Calkins' work that is present today. The story of Calkins has intrigued and influenced others in the field of psychology. It has continued to influence others in the field through her work and legacy as one of the earliest women in the field. Calkins provided a foundation for women in the field and challenged the traditional ideas regarding the position of women in academics.